Hello, Royalers. Welcome to another great episode of Royal Black and Elite. I'm Lady Trinette Wilson, and I have been preparing as we're getting ready to launch for our Royal Black and Elite tour for the month of February. I'm so excited. I'm going to be at libraries and universities. But for today's episode, we're going to enter the world of football and the drama surrounding HBCUs. Have you been following Coach Prime, Deion Sanders' career? Man, it's been going really wonderful. He just took a job in Colorado, and he started out at Jackson State. But there's been a lot of drama about around HBCUs. And then last week, it really popped off when Ed Reed went in on Bethune-Cookman about the dirty conditions and different things that's going on in the athletic department. That's when I thought, hmm, be a great idea to tell you about the history of HBCUs. Now there's 107 of them, so we can't get into all of them, but I will point out some of the most noted ones, the oldest ones, and ones who have been embroiled in scandal. I'm also going to tell you what the endowments are. What is the money that undergirds these HBCUs? So join me as we go into this episode and learn about the HBCUs across the country. Before we get started, I want to always say thank you for liking, sharing, and subscribing. We're over 500 subscribers. <laughs> I'm just so overwhelmed and honored that people find this subject as interesting as I find it. Um, and I think it's so needed in our community to know about all the important African Americans throughout Black history. So let's jump right into our first university called Cheney University. Now, Cheney is the oldest HBCU still in operation, and it's located in Pennsylvania. It opened in 1837, though in the South, places like South Carolina were enacting the Black Codes. Meanwhile, in places like Philadelphia, one in Washington, um, an outgrowth for the need to escape the extreme racism and provide a safe place for Black intellects. Um, to learn began to sprout out, and Cheney was just such a place. Now, it was established by a $10,000 donation left by a Quaker named Bridget Humphreys, and he wanted to design and establish a school for black teachers. Now, Cheney went through a few name changes before landing on Cheney. When it was first founded, it was called the African Institute. Then it was called the Institute of Colored Youth. In 1913, that's when the Cheney name um, began to be connected to it because they moved to a farm of 275 acres. And so that's where the Cheney name came from. Now, some people who you may know who went to Cheney was uh, the, the brilliant journalist, journalist, he's passed away now, uh, used to work for 60 Minutes, named Ed Bradley. Now, with an endowment of $1.48 million, Cheney's average cost is about $13,000 a year. Now, only 15% of their students graduate, according to the Department of Education. Um, but in 2022, they um, reported an increase in enrollment. So hopefully things are looking up. So let's move to our second one. Um, the, it was the first black owned and operated school. And this one is called Wilberforce. Now Wilberforce is in Ohio and it was established by a collaboration between the Conference of Methodist Episcopal Churches and the African American um, Episcopal Churches, the AME, to provide a classical education for black youth. And we'll see that as we study the establishment of black organizations, these two organizations were often involved. It is named after an abolitionist. So Wilberforce is named after the abolitionist named William Wilberforce. And we see that often too, um, white abolitionists being the one to finance uh, these black universities. But that's why, that's who it's named after. Now though that William Wilberforce is the one is named after in 1863, Bishop Daniel A. Payne bought the college. And over time, the college became the center of black culture. In 1898, they had 20 faculty, 334 students, and 246 graduates. Now today, they have an endowment of about $6.7 million, and the tuition runs about $16,000, with a, a little bit better 
graduation rate than Cheney is the 24 at 24 percent now one famous person who graduated there is Reverend Floyd a flake if you know uh, if you're in the AME move, movement or around that church movement uh, Floyd Flake is very big in that movement our next school is Howard University, and it was founded shortly after the Civil War by the First Congressional Society of Washington. And it really it was established for as a liberal arts and medicine school. It was named after Oliver Otis Howard, who was the commissioner of the Freedmen's Bureau. He also served as the president from 1869 to 1874. Howard quickly, you know, became the Mecca, and that's what the um, name is called, the Mecca. Um, there is about 12,000 students who are who are enrolled today. They have an $839 million endowment and a really good graduation rate of 62%. Some of the famous people that you may know um, who have attended, Howard was Chadwick Boseman, who we know as uh, the king of Wakanda rest in peace another famous person the first black supreme court justice thurgood marshall also graduated from howard university now we're going to look at the two sister and brother schools if you will in atlanta georgia spellman and morehouse so let's start with spellman it's a historically black a liberal arts college for women in atlanta georgia it was founded in 1881 as the atlanta baptist female seminary by four and four white women were the instructors there. John D. Rockefeller also pledged two hundred and fifty dollars, uh, despite him being the richest man in the world. And the name was changed to Spelman in eighteen eighty four. Now, it received its charter in nineteen twenty four, becoming the second oldest private uh, school for black women in the country. It has a five hundred and thirty nine dollar endowment. A million dollar endowment so really nice endowment with 2400 plus students currently enrolled and some of its famous attendees includes author alice walker and actress everybody's uh, mom back in the day from good times esther Rowe. now we go over to the brother school morehouse which was founded in 1867 by william jefferson white a he was a protestant minister and he wanted to train educators and we know like many times these places were founded by white people now today morehouse is one of the five colleges in the atlanta complex center and it includes morehouse spellman clark atlanta morris brown and the interdenominational theological center but in 1975 morehouse actually also opened up a medical school so a school for all black men to be graduating, it, it's just a beautiful thing. Now, the school began as Atlanta Baptist Seminary, similar to what Spelman did. But in 1913, the college's first African-American president, his name was John Hope. Okay, I know he don't look black, just go with it, child. But anyway, he renamed the school. And given his appearance, we can understand why he named the school after the man that he named it after and his name was Dr. Henry Lehman Morehouse. So he was a prominent white donor to the college and that's why they named it after him. Now, who are some famous people who went to uh, Morehouse? Dr. Martin Luther King, Spike Lee, and even Samuel L. Jackson are all graduates of Morehouse. Now with an endowment of $278 million, uh, students spent an annual a cost of around thirty-five thousand dollars. It's about twenty-one hundred students currently um, there, and they graduate at a rate of about fifty-six percent. Now, our last school, I believe, is probably one of our most storied school, Tuskegee University, founded in eighteen eighty-one by the state legislature of Alabama. It used to be named the Tuskegee Normal School for Colored Teachers. It also used to be called Tuskegee Normal, but is now Tuskegee University. Now, some things we may know about Tuskegee are the Tuskegee Airmen, and we may have even heard of the Tuskegee Experiment. 
I plan on doing a video of that during Black History Month. Now, Booker T. Washington was the first president of Tuskegee University. He was only 25 years old, and under his leadership, it grew a, a great deal. And so it was renamed, it was named a historical site in 1965. Now, and if you'd like to attend this historically black college, it's going to cost you about $37,000 a year. And they have an endowment of about $126 million. Bad news is only about 16% of the people who attend graduate. So uh, we can do better. But that is the list of our historically black colleges that I thought was interesting and really had name recognition. Just a side note to give you an idea how money compares Harvard's endowment, $41 billion. So there's a great deal of discrepancy between HBCUs and uh, universities as far as the money that's in the bank. I do believe that's why we see the difference in graduation rates. But what did you think? Had you known about the history of the HBCUs? Was Ed Reed right? Did he have a right to tell what was going on behind the scenes? He since apologized, so we'll see how this one, uh, you know, goes forward. In the meantime, remember to pick up your book, Royal Black and Elite, so you can see some of these great stories about our royal black and elite in our culture. I want to thank you for liking, sharing, subscribing, and always for tuning in for another great episode of Royal Black and Elite.